Hey guys, it's Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where, as requested, I have a book haul. If you are somehow not aware, every month I play a TBR game on my channel where the reward when I get to the end of the board is a book haul. While I am not on an official book buying ban, I am trying to be a bit more careful and not buy compulsively. I'm gonna buy things if it's like the next in a series and I really wanna read the next book right away or if I come across something at Value Village that I really want. But otherwise, I am trying to curb my spending habits a little bit. But back in June, well, at the end of May, before the month of June, I finished my board for the first time. So I bought some books in June and I'm gonna show them off to you today. We're gonna start with the two that have still not arrived. I ordered these specifically from Blackwell's in the UK right at the beginning of June and they still haven't gotten here, but it's okay, I can wait a little bit. That's what happens when you don't order from Amazon and it's like next day shipping. It's totally fine. I picked up the next two books in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. So I got Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. This is an adult fantasy series that I read back in May and absolutely fell head over heels for. It is an intensely personal story of Fitz, who is the bastard son of the prince in waiting to be king. But as soon as the prince learns that he has a bastard son, he abdicates the throne and runs away. The problem is the royal family is still stuck with Fitz. So they decide to put him through school like all the other royal children to house him and to feed him and clothe him and then the king notices that there's something very special about Fitz and so he thinks that Fitz is in a perfect position to become the royal assassin for the crown. He is just important enough to be invited to royal events but not so important that he will not be sorely missed in case something goes wrong. Like I said, I read this back in May and absolutely fell in love. So I went and picked up the sequels immediately after finishing. I specifically really, really like these UK editions a lot more than the Canadian and American editions, which is why I ordered from the UK. So those two are on their way and I'm really excited for them to get here, but unfortunately I can't like show them off all prettily to you, but I'm sure you'll see them soon because I'm itching to read them. So I'm definitely going to be reading them soon. I think I will also continue through and read all of Robin Hobb's books in this Realm of the Elderlings universe because it's just so captivating. Her writing is so special and I will definitely be continuing. So if I do do any more book hauls, you might see more of her books on there. So the next book I picked up is the Black Edition of Death Note Volume 3, which contains volumes five and six of the regular editions. This is a manga series that I really, really love. It's actually one of my favorite series overall. It's just so captivating. It follows Light, who is a high school student that is growing a little bit bored with his life. And one day he comes across a Death Note, which is a notebook that is owned by a death god. And whichever name you write, in the notebook that person will die and so light is facing this great dilemma of does he use it for good or evil what constitutes good or evil when it comes to killing people and all of these grand discussions but there's a really interesting cast of characters and a lot of these kind of morally gray discussions and ideas and it's just so interesting the plot is so engaging and you're always kind of wrapped up wanting to know what's coming next. The volume three specifically has been out of stock for ages. It's been in reprint, I guess, because it was so popular. So I have not been able to get my hands on it for ages. So as soon as I saw that it was on order at Chapters, I literally jumped on it, grabbed it right away, and it still took a while to get here, but it finally is here. And now I'm torn on wanting to read it right away or wait till I collect all of them and read them all at once and like binge them because it's just a very bingeable series. But I'm so like excited to see what happens. So I don't know, I'm hoping to get to it soon. But at the same time, I kind of want to wait and binge. So we'll see what happens. But either way, I'm glad that it is finally back in stock. I got my hands on it. It's now ready to be read whenever I want it. And I can't wait to keep going with the series. The next book I bought is not a continuation, but a start to a series. You guys might know this one in English as A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabo, but in French, it is Les Fiancés de Levi. And this is originally written in French. So I thought I might as well go ahead and pick it up in French since I should have probably practice my French because I only use it for work and it's in a very like specialized technical language and I'm like I should probably just try to keep up list, like consuming media in French. When it comes to the general plot of this I have no idea. I know that it's a young adult fantasy that a lot of people love and I know that it follows a young girl who has some kind of clairvoyant powers I believe and I know that the world's setting is in these great like spires in the sky and these like kingdoms in the clouds, but I don't know anything beyond that. So I'm excited to jump into it. I'm definitely planning on taking my time with this and kind of getting back into the swing of like reading in French for fun and consuming media in French for entertainment. 
because again I'm so used to speaking it at work that I just haven't really had a chance to watch French TV, listen to French music, or read in French since I finished high school which was in French. I did my university degree in English and I've been working a lot in English. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna practice my little French muscles. I'm going to pick up a young adult book. So that means hopefully that the language will be fairly understandable and it will be easy to get through. And worst comes to worst, the English translation is widely available. So I can always compare the two and see if there's anything I truly missed. So I'm excited to get to it. I absolutely hate this like teeny tiny edition. I truly, it's so cheap and it drives me up the wall. But what is important is inside. I will not be picky because this is for my brain more than overall enjoyment. All right, so the next book I picked up is actually a little bit sentimental to me, surprisingly. It's Ring by Koji Suzuki. Now let me explain. So at the beginning of July, I was actually in Montreal with my boyfriend on a little weekend getaway. We live about two hours away from Montreal, so we drive down there whenever we get a chance, but we haven't been able to in a while because of COVID. So we decided when it was games three and four of the NHL playoffs that we would just take a little roadie, spend a few days in Montreal, eat and drink ourselves to death, and have a good time. And we were waiting for the bars to open for game four on Monday, and we were just walking around and I saw a chapters, and I could not resist, and I was like, I can kill like three hours easily in a bookstore. Come on, why don't we just go in? He's like, yeah, okay, sure, no problem. So we're in the chapters, and I spot this edition of The Ring. Now this one specifically has been sold out everywhere. I have not been able to get my hands on it, but it is specifically this one I wanted. I think this cover is so cool. I love the spine and how it looks on my shelf, and I really, really wanted this one specifically. I could read it online, of course, but if I did own it, I was on the hunt for this one. And when I saw it, I thought, you know what? This is also like kind of a souvenir. When I look at it, I'm gonna remember that great weekend we had and all the food we ate and all the stuff we did. And I was just like, I think it's a perfect time to get it. This is an adult horror novel, so maybe not the cheeriest. And as far as I know, it basically is, it's the inspiration for the movie. So there is a tape that you get. And if you play it, you will live for only another seven days. And I don't know more than that, but I know Japanese horror is iconic and classic and I'm really really excited to read this classic of Japanese horror. I'm just truly so in love with this trippy ass cover, like I'm so glad I was able to finally find a copy of this one specifically. So the next book I want to talk about that I picked up in June, you guys have already seen if you watched my Game of Tomes for July. I've actually already read it too. It's Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. This is a memoir of Caitlin's time working in a crematory and all of the lessons she learned and how it taught her to view death. This was on my five star predictions list. I had really, really high hopes for it and I decided to pick it up for myself because it was not available at either of the libraries I have cards to and it was not on Scribd. So I thought, guess I'm gonna buy it. And I read it and I absolutely loved it. This was a five-star read. Spoiler. It was just phenomenal. I'm really glad I have a copy of this on my shelves because I think it is a book that I will definitely come back to. Another one you guys might have seen if you saw my mid-year book freakout tag was World Travel by Anthony Bourdain. I absolutely love Anthony Bourdain. He has my whole heart and I just wanted something else from him on my shelves. I have Kitchen Confidential which is kind of his memoir type book and it is not my favorite, so I thought this one would just be a really nice, almost like a keepsake because it's such a beautiful book. It is very heavy and it's luxurious. It's got these beautiful little illustrations. And while I did flip through it and I was kind of sad that there was not more Anthony in there because it was written largely after his death and it was written using a lot of his quotes from his shows, so it's not really written by him per se. It's still really nice to have this little piece of him on my shelves and I think it would make like a good coffee table book and it's just something that I would definitely refer to and I thought, you know, I completed my Game of Tomes board. I thought I would treat myself. It was on sale because it was a more recent release and Chapters always puts their recent releases kind of on a discount. I thought it's a good time. I'm gonna treat myself. It's not something I would normally go out of my way to buy, but it's Anthony Bourdain and I'm treating myself and it's summer and fuck it, I wanted it. And the last one, I'm just gonna kind of like slip in here. It, it was a freebie. I raided a family member's shelves and I saw this and they were like, oh, I was actually gonna get rid of that. And I was like, I'll take it. And it's Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Listen, it was like, it's in perfect condition. I know that a family member owned it, so it's not going to be destroyed. And I wanted to read this and I would not have paid for it, I think. I would have just read it on script or borrowed it from the library, but I always enjoy reading books in physical form more wherever I can, so I picked it up. As far as I know, this is kind of like a very feel-good 
post-apocalyptic novel following a troupe of actors who perform Shakespeare plays in random communities. Obviously, since this is post-apocalyptic, these communities are very spread out. So it's like a traveling group of actors and you just kind of follow them a little bit and kind of their lessons along the way, as far as I know. It's a pretty short book too, which I quite like. I'm looking forward to getting to it eventually. I think the fact that I'm gonna have it on my shelves will also force me to pick it up sooner. And I know that a lot of people really, really like connected to this book and loved it. So I am excited for it. I'm more excited that I got it for free though, because I am a cheapskate. And that was it. That was my short little haul. I told you guys there wouldn't be a ton because I don't really go on like massive hauls. I try to be a bit intentional with what I buy, but it's still some books that I bought and I hope you enjoyed and if you've read some of these that I haven't please let me know what you thought of them otherwise my social media is linked down below you guys can always come talk to me there and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next one bye